Hello and welcome to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spady, your host. This show is a labor of love. God's love for all his broken children. And in a special way, for those who find themselves paralyzed by the grips of the evil one because of the different traumas they suffered. 1 Corinthians 12.26 reminds us that if one member suffers, all suffer with it. Now that I have found profound healing, I feel it's my responsibility to help others. While our wounds may look different, we are all looking for the same thing, to be loved and accepted in our woundedness. Because of the trauma I went through at such a young age, I grew up believing I was too broken to amount to anything and that God would never use me for anything purposeful. Those were all lies. Through my healing journey, I came to realize them as such, and I no longer believe in them. When we allow God to heal us, then our past pain and suffering can become redemptive. I can't imagine doing anything else right now other than helping other hurting souls walk their own healing journey. There are so many facets to one's healing journey, and so many different tools already available to us that can assist us with that process. In today's show, my guest and I will discuss the healing power of music. I have always loved music. Growing up in Brazil, I remember how whenever there was a cookout or a family get together, someone would break out with a guitar. Everyone would sit around for hours singing and listening to music. I loved those memories. But it wasn't until about 13 years ago that a good friend of mine introduced me to praise and worship music. At this time, I was at a very dark place dealing with depression. My friend suggested I tried listening to this type of music to help ease my pain. To say that this was a good recommendation is an understatement. This music helped me bring back from that terrible dark place I was in. I have been listening to praise and worship music ever since. Music has the power to speak to the mind, the emotions, and the spirit. Many of us do not understand this powerful aspect of our Lord's creation. My guest today is a dear friend who I know understands the healing power of music. My beautiful friend, Aubrey Quintero, is a wife, a mother of six children, and someone who has the gift of music. She's a very accomplished singer and the Associate Director of Worship at St. Gabriel Catholic Church in Charlotte. Hello, sweet Aubrey. Hello, Elsa. So happy to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Oh, so good to have you. Aubrey, if you would, please tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I was born and raised in Denver, Colorado. Um, and my family then moved here and when I was in my 20s. So my parents, my brother, and even extended family live here in the Carolinas. Um, my husband and I met in our early 20s and got married. My husband, Adrian, he is the um, director of evangelization of youth at St. Gabriel right now as well. So we work there together. That's we do awesome. have six children. Mm-hmm. Our oldest is getting married in June. Yay. Um, that's really crazy to think about. And uh, my second oldest is graduating high school. He's a senior, so he's graduating in May and going to the University of Franciscan, Franciscan University in Steubenville, Ohio. That's awesome. Um, uh, we will then have a freshman, a sophomore, a seventh grader, and a fifth grader next fall going to school. And, yeah, just busy. Yes, busy. you are busy. All good busy. Um, you and I met years ago through St. Mark. 
you know, used to be a parishioner there. And your kids actually still go to St. Mark's school. Another connection we have is that when Aubrey used to work at St. Mark as the head of music for Teen Mass, my daughter Bella used to sing with you. By the way, she was crushed when you left St. Mark to go to St. Gabriel. I just, I, I always remember that. She came home and she said, Mom, Aubrey is leaving St. Mark. And I, my first reaction was like, why? And where's she going? <laughs> and, and then she told me you were going to St. Gabriel. And I said, maybe we can talk to Father pa- Putnam. Tell him not to let her go. <laughs> You know, we understand this kind of stuff, right? I mean, you, you you were looking for another job, and they had a position and all of that, but it was still hard. And um, she has missed you. I think she sees you as her music mentor. That's a huge honor. She's She's an amazing young lady and so very talented. And I think the thing that brought me the most joy working at St. Mark um, with the teens who were involved singing as these young girls w- or guys would come up and they they were happy to be there and mm. they wanted to play their instrument whether it was the guitar or drums or whatever or they wanted to sing and they knew the songs and it was amazing to me that they already knew the songs we were doing and, and they were so happy to sing them it just brought so much joy to my heart that's beautiful well I think you have the gift with young people too you know what I mean which um it's such a beautiful gift to have. Obviously, we all have different gifts for a reason. But I think that you are in the perfect spot doing music and working with the teens because it is beautiful to see them involved. You know, it took, um, when we moved here, Bella was fourth grade. So what is that, 11? Mm-hmm. She was 11 years old. And St. Mark had the um, children's choir. And so she was 11, Brie was 9, and I just kind of pushed them right in there. I'm like, I think you girls should both join the children's choir. And at that age, they're very willing to go wherever we tell them to. So both girls were very happy to join. But through the years, we found out that Bella really enjoyed doing it. Although she's shy and more reserved, so the fact that the choir at St. Mark was all the way upstairs, that she wasn't, you know, going to be seen, was huge for Bella. It helped her to develop her gift musically without having all eyes on her. So now that she's older, she's 17 years old, she feels more comfortable with singing Mm -hmm. in front of people. So I think that's a huge gift and a blessing. I think, too, it's really just the encouragement. Like, they're there. You you can see the gift inside of them, right? But they have that fear. You're like, oh, I know, you, I know you're in the shower singing, right? Mm-hmm. You're in, you have your inner diva. You just need to be singing right here for the Lord. Let it out, right? We're here to praise God. Yes. So uh, just really encouraging them to, to be in a place of surrender, right? Yes. To the fear and, and just be able to truly praise the Lord is, is, is where we, we yes. need to be. I agree. I agree. And I think Laura, that is no longer with us, and she's in Colorado, Colorado she? Yeah. So you're here, and <laughs> she moves there. We places. Yep. She was a huge, um, oh, my gosh, she was so good with those kids. So good. Mm-hmm. She was so good with those kids. So, again, you need people that understand that how to help the kids um, stay with it and bring out those gifts that God has already given them, mm-hmm. you know, so they can... Uh, sing for God, because what, what's more beautiful than that? Yeah. Not much. Not much. Okay, looks like we're coming to a break. We're going to be right back. Okay, thank you.
Carolina Catholic Radio is your local EWTN parish and community connection, bringing you local news and information from over 100 parishes in the Charlotte Diocese and Rock Hill Oratory. Catch the spirit. Prayerfully consider a tax-deductible donation today at carolinacatholicradio.org. Hello, this is Carolyn Klicka, relationship coach with Abounding Joy, a new feature on Carolina Catholic Radio. Our marriage and other relationships are so important to our peace and happiness. Are you struggling with conflicts that just continue to escalate? Are you dealing with anger, fear, or just feel like you need to find new solutions? I'll share some godly principles on how you can resolve relationship and inner conflicts, create agreements, and move into the peace and joy that God wants for you. Discover greater freedom and healing through insights about the truth of who we are and what God is asking of us. Join me daily for two minutes of insight and encouragement for your heart and your relationships. This is Carolyn Klicka with Abounding Joy. Visit me at AboundingJoyMinistry.com. Listen in and discover why today I choose joy. The good news is you have some gifts to open. The bad news is you have to share them with the world. One Minute Monk, Abbot Placid Solari of Belmont Abbey. In his rule, St. Benedict tells his monks they're not allowed to receive gifts from family and friends unless the monk has asked the permission of the abbot, who may decide that the gift should go to another monk. Furthermore, a gift may not be taken by a monk and stored away in his room, where only he and his close friends can enjoy it. Just the same. The gifts that are given to us by the Lord should be received in obedience and detachment and are really intended for the benefit of everyone in his kingdom. For your free copy of The Rule of St. Benedict, visit OneMinuteMonk.com, O-N-E, MinuteMonk.com. The gifts we are given are meant to be shared, not so that we are denied the gift, but so that we may find greater joy in it and can assist in building up the body of Christ. Carolina Catholic Radio is here to encourage Catholics to learn, love, and live their faith. We're here to go into the breach when the active parishioner leaves the pew, when the inactive or fallen away Catholic needs reminding, and when a Christian is searching for answers only found in the church that Jesus Christ started with his apostles over 2,000 years ago. Please consider making a one-time donation or monthly pledge today. For more information, contact us through our website at carolinacatholicradio.org. AM 1270 Catholic Radio Charlotte on the Carolina Catholic Radio Network. On air, online, and on the new Carolina Catholic Radio mobile app. Get involved and connect. Learn, love, and live your faith. CarolinaCatholicRadio.org Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spady, your host, and um, I have Aubrey Contero with me today, my dear friend, and we are talking about the healing power of music because I love praise and worship music, and it has helped me tremendously in my healing journey. And um, I think that if, if it worked for me, I think it works it can work for you too the listener you know that's why I wanted to have this show so Aubrey I would love to know when your love for music started do you come from a musical family yes I actually come from a very musical family oh, everyone neat. in my family sings um, I'm very blessed in that way my father's dad my grandfather he was the choir director at our church growing up and then my mother's mom was the pianist Wow. Um, there was always music. Uh, holidays, we would always go caroling in the neighborhoods That's as a beautiful. family. That's awesome. Um, my grandpa and my dad and my uncles, they had a quartet. Wow. So they called it the Shearer Quartet, and they would sing gospel hymns, gospel songs. And, yeah, it, they, they even made a tape. I don't know if people remember what tapes look like, but... <laughs> Not a lot. They created a tape uh, this year, this year quartet. And, um, yeah, so I, I remember my first time ever singing in front of church. Um, I was five years old. Wow. And um, I sang 
it was at Christmas time. So, oh gosh, what was I singing? I think I was singing Silent Night. And um, yeah, that was my first did you love of, it? Do you, did you yes. remember loving it? Yeah, I, I. So as a family, we would always sing, but then I started singing as well. Like at school, I was in choirs, many choirs, and then I learned how to play the trumpet. I learned how to read music, and played the trumpet. So I was in band. I did a little bit of piano, and then um, in high school, I was in a choir, several choirs at school, but then also a choir at church, and um, it was called Upward Bound, and this was a traveling choir. Wow. Uh, we went on tour every summer and we How would neat. go stay at host homes and we would sing at other churches. And I think this is where I really realized the power of music for not just myself, mm-hmm. but for other people. Yes. And I was a teenager and I'm singing about the love of Christ. And, you know, we would give personal testimonies as well. And, um, you know, older people would come up to us after the concert and it was really more of a concert, you know, and, um, they would say, Oh my gosh, like you really, that music just touched my heart Mm -hmm. or that song that you sang really spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And, or I really just felt the presence of the Lord here while you, while you were singing, because we're singing songs like testify to love and shout to the Lord. I mean, we're singing, we're singing songs that are really praising, praising God. And, and and people responded. There of there was a response did. of their heart because it's a natural thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, music. Um, I think this type of music is it's um, just like another way of praying, and, and it's definitely a way of God communicating to His children through music, through this type of music. That's what I've come to realize too because it's it, it's very much like you listening to someone's story mm-hmm. and how God has been there mm-hmm. uh, with them mm-hmm. through everything um, I found so many songs that um, it's just they hit right on that spot and you stay there and you feel oh my goodness someone else feels exactly the same as I do they've been there done that but then you feel so much better after you listen to that song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you don't feel alone anymore. Yes. I agree. I feel, I mean, uh, the, cr- music in general creates an emotional response, right, of the heart. Yes. And if you are, if you were to watch any movie and just take the music away. Mm. It, it would be it terrible. Would be, right? Like, yes. how, like, how can you watch a movie? Yeah. So, so whether you have a swell in the string section or you know, a strong brass entrance or mm. whatever is happening in a, in a movie with, with the music, it's drawing you in. Yes. So, so if we're listening to music that is centered on Christ's promises, mm. Christ being with us, mm-hmm. uh, the, the praise of Christ, like I know Matt Marr recently, um, his song, praise the Lord. I love, that I song. love that song. It's Me so too. good. Cause if yep. I have, if I have breath, I have, I, I know. can praise you can the Lord. praise him. And yeah. that's all we need. Yes. So, so many songs out there, like uh, Lauren Daigle. She's one of my favorites. Yes, I know you love me her too. too. Yep. And she has this song, I Will Trust. Mm-hmm. I Will Trust. I Will Trust in You. It's really all about yes. being able to let go, right? Letting go of every mm-hmm. single thing uh, that's weighing me down, basically, and being able to trust in the Lord because He He's the one that has it planned out for us. Yes. And we, are, we we get stuck in fear and we get stuck in ourselves yes. and our circumstances. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think for, for the praise and worship music, uh, um, it just, it, it does. It gives us that, that moment to really think, think about, you know, what we're saying, mm-hmm. trusting in the Lord. Um, and then you're like, oh, man, I'm yeah. not doing so good at that or I need to do better at that. Or, yes. There's yes. a song recently that I've done. For communion, um, it's called First Love, mm. and it's by Carrie Job. Oh, I and like her, too. I'm not sure if I've heard that one, though. I just love the song First Love, and I need to bring it up here. So Maybe can we can, right. before we go on break, you can play that for us. Yeah, that would be awesome. It's, it's, a, it's a song that really, it, it says, here I am at the table. It's mm. it's about being at the table of communion, right? To receive. And and when you're receiving Christ, He is your first love. Mm. He loved you and knew about you before your parents knew about you. So He truly is your first love. He loved so you true. first. Yes. And so in that moment, when I sing first love at communion, 
It's just uh, like just remembering Christ's love for me, not only um, just from in, in the beginning, like, right, just loving me because he loves me, but, but then how he loved me. I know. With his I know. death with, on the cross and his, yeah. It, it's, uh, it's just sometimes you can't even find the words to describe it. I just feel like when I'm listening to some of these songs, and I, I have the habit of doing it, I like to see the artist. So I go on YouTube. My kids think I'm crazy. Yeah, I'm me like, too. honey, you know, they say, mom, why don't you do Pandora? You do this, you do that. <laughs> My daughter did, all, Bella did all these lists of songs for me. Um, and she said, here, it's all here, all your favorite songs. Your Brazilian songs, your Brazilian worship songs, your American worship songs. And I said, honey, but you don't understand. I really, truly love watching the artist's expressions. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to be there with them. I love watching their emotions. Yeah. You know, because I, 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 to me, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Part of music is feeling what they're feeling. Whoever is singing owns that song for that time, right? And I want, I want to look at their facial expressions, what they're doing, how they're walking, and I dream of being in their place. You know what I mean? I, I'm not a singer. I don't have that gift. I do sing along. You know, I don't care. <laughs> you know, I, and, I do, and I do sing in the shower, and I do all of that, and I get made fun of. And, and my husband usually says, don't quit your day job. And, and it's not a big deal to me. <laughs> Although he did say to me the other day that I sound really beautiful when I sing in Portuguese. And I'm like, okay, all right, I remember that. So you don't want me to sing in English, but I can sing in Portuguese. So it's kind of <laughs> funny. All right, we, we're two minutes away from a break. So I like, did you find that song? It wouldn't, I'm thinking I need to connect to the Wi-Fi because it's not, it's not showing me my words. Um, but here, let's talk about some, maybe another one. Maybe I did, one. Um, just yesterday, we did Build My Life. And this is another one that we, we like, I like to do because the song, the words are worthy of every s mm, word, I, worthy I of every it. song we could ever sing, mm -hmm. worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, That's a beautiful worthy of song. every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Yes. Jesus is the name above every other name. Jesus is the only one who could ever save, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Amen. And holy. There is no one like you. There is no one beside you. Mm. No one. So you open up my eyes in wonder and you show me who you are. Fill me with your heart mm. and lead me to love those around me. I love those words. Yeah. Yes, I've, I've heard that one many times. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, I can't. If you, if you ask me, can you give me five of your favorite songs? I'm going to go, there's no way. I have about a hundred of them. Okay, that's how much I love this type of music. That's how much I need it. I, I, I do it, with, it, you know, I listen to this music when I'm getting ready in the morning. I listen to this music when I'm cooking for my family. You know, I just, it's just, it's part of my life. It's just, I can't, I, I almost can't do it without anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just the way I get fed. It's the way I get fed. It's another way of getting, of being fed. So if you're listening to us right now and you have no idea what we're talking about, because um, I was at that point, I had no idea what this worship music was like. What, what, what was I missing, right? I, I didn't know. But let me tell you, if you start, just, you know, start listening to, go to a Kate Love station, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. what we have basically throughout the whole country. And start listening to this type of music because that's what you're going to find all the different artists, and you're going to figure out the ones that you like the most, mm -hmm. those songs that are going to touch you the deepest. And I promise you, you are going to need it every day. It's going to come to a point where you are going to start singing the songs, and you are going to want more of it, and your playlist is going to, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> have all of these beautiful um, praise and worship music, and it's okay, and it's okay. It, it, it doesn't mean you're less of a Catholic. <laughs> Because actually, in the beginning of me doing all this stuff, I thought that it would get me away from being a Catholic. And it's, it's another lie. You know what I mean? It's just, it's another lie. It's beautiful, and I love it. And I, I hope that 
today we can inspire our listeners to check out this type of music if they haven't yet. We need to take a break and we'll be right back. Thank you. As a public service due to the coronavirus pandemic, Carolina Catholic Radio is broadcasting daily Mass from St. Mark Catholic Church in Huntersville every day at 1 p.m. Please join us for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass every day at 1 p.m. exclusively on Carolina Catholic Radio. This is Tammy Harris. I am the founder and executive director of the Ursus Institute. We fight human trafficking both locally and abroad. I'm also a parishioner at St. Gabriel Catholic Church in Charlotte, as well as the Respect Life Coordinator there. I urge you to check out my website, www.ursusinstitute.net, or to reach out to me personally at my email, tammy at ursusinstitute.net. Ursus is Latin for bear and is spelled U R. S-U-S. And my first name, Tammy, is T-A-M-M-Y. We're involved in many operations right now, such as opening a transitional home for survivors in Western North Carolina. We're involved in a documentary about our work and about the realities of human trafficking, both locally and abroad. We're also giving input into anti-human trafficking legislation, involved in intel operations and rescue operations. There's many other things I'd like to share with you, and there's many ways that you can get involved. So I urge you, please text me at 704-519-7901, email me at tammy at ursusinstitute.net, or check out our website, www.ursusinstitute.net. And again, Ursus is spelled U-R-S-U-S. And please be assured that this human trafficking nonprofit works against trafficking in a way that is aligned with Catholic social teaching. Thanks for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you. Hey guys, it's Jason Murphy again for the Catholic Men's Conference of the Carolinas. How are you holding up during these unprecedented times? First COVID-19, then quarantine and now rising racial and political tensions that are dividing us. It would seem that all is falling and lost, but that is where our faith and trust in Christ kicks in. How are we nourishing our spiritual life during all of this? How will we handle this when things go back to normal? What will normal look like? What needs to get weeded out of our garden to ensure a healthy crop this summer? God knows, and we pray for the strength and wisdom to recognize these things when life begins again. How about you? We're looking for a few good men to step up and share how you're strengthening your faith in daily life, especially these days. Your responses will be used by Carolina Catholic Radio as part of a new weekly feature called the Carolina Catholic Men's Minute. Simply email your response to feedback at carolinacatholicradio.org and get on board. For the Catholic Men's Conference, this is Jason Murphy. Carolina Catholic Radio is grateful to St. Mark and St. Michael for hosting our first Carolina Catholic Parish Weekends in the month of April. Please consider hosting a weekend at your parish this month. Many local Catholics do not know they have a local Catholic radio station of their own. Together, we can bring inactive and fallen away Catholics back to the pews. For more information, contact us through our website at carolinacatholicradio.org. Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spady, your host, and um, I'm here with my friend Aubrey Quintero, and we are talking about the healing power of music, especially praise and worship music. That's the kind of music that God uses to really heal His children. It has done amazing things for me, for my own healing. And I hope that I can inspire you today to, if you haven't yet, if you haven't listened to this type of music before, praise and worship music, I hope you, you give it a chance. And I promise you, you are going to love it. You're going to love it because God, I truly believe God does speak to us through music, through 
um, praise and worship music. And Aubrey, I know how your sweet family had to endure something very painful the last few years. And I'm sorry for that. One of your daughters had to fight cancer at a very young age. And um, by the grace of God, she's doing much better. Mm -hmm. I just saw her the other day. She looks beautiful, and Thank she you. looks so healthy. Her hair is coming in beautiful. She's gorgeous anyways. Um, when your family was going through this difficult time, did you find that this same music you had been singing to inspire other people was now helping you get through the pain of watching your sweet little girl suffer through all those cancer treatments? Yes, I mean, I think, Elza, there's been many moments in my life where, um, you know, listening to the songs when you're so, maybe you're so angry or you're so sad, you're so upset because mm -hmm. of your circumstance, and then listening to some of these songs that will just um, meet you where you're at, you yes. know, but then give you perspective. Yes. I think it's th in the remembering, the remembering when, when you have those songs that remind you of God's faithfulness, mm -hmm. remind you of God's promise, remind you that he's with you, mm -hmm. that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's what these songs will do. They, they, they will help in that way to just remind you. And I know for Amelia, you know, when she, when she came home, she was diagnosed at nine with leukemia and coming home from the hospital. I mean, we, she'd have, she'd have to go every week for, mm -hmm. um, I remember that for treatment and it would just make her feel so sick. And, and she was in a lot of pain mm. and she crossword word finds, <laughs> word finds were her thing to like occupy her mind from the pain. And then mm -hmm. I would crank the praise and worship music. Beautiful. Um, it helps to keep us in a positive state because it's so easy when I call it the pit of despair, right? You, uh -huh. you start thinking those negative thoughts and then you just can like spiral. It's like, well, the woe is me. You just keep thinking more and more negative thoughts and sure. it's hard to stay positive. And, and, you know, St. Paul talks about, um, like the reason we have joy and that's because of our hope in Christ. And so when we have these songs who that are reminding us, mm -hmm. right, of of Christ being with us and what Christ has done for us and how Christ loves us and that that we're not alone and that we have hope. Yes. Then it's harder to live in the state of the pit of despair, you know. Yes. And there was many moments, many times when going through treatment with Amelia, she would just say, you know, um like my life my life sucks. My life is mm. terrible. And I'm like, well, okay. You're going through something that's very hard. And not that you can't be upset and angry about that, but really let's look at your life and all the ways that we're blessed and constantly mm. thinking of and, and bringing to mind, well, you're safe. Mm. You're safe in your home. You're loved. Mm -hmm. You're cared for. You, you have you have everything that you need. You have clothes. You have you have food. You have, you know, friends. You have siblings who love you. You have, we have all of the, this community who's who's helping us get through this hard time, and we have a hospital thirty minutes away from our house that has the medicine to make you well, mm -hmm. and the doctors that have the knowledge and wisdom to know mm -hmm. how to fight this battle with you, your life, your life doesn't just suck, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But in her pain, I can see why she was oh, saying yeah. that completely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm mm -hmm. sure you were this close yeah. to saying that yourself <laughs> at times. Was, there was a lot of times where, you know, I felt like I had to just be that I was, had to be strong or sometimes sure. I wasn't strong and we just cried together, you know, yeah. but, yeah. um, but keeping the perspective yes and the eye and our eyes on the lord yes and and definitely praise and worship i mean she would just sit there and find her word do her word find and just listen to the praise and worship music that's beautiful and and isn't that beautiful that you already had that in your home right it was not something new that you had to introduce to her 
or your other kids. Right. You know, you, this was part of your life already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it became second nature that you would just crank that up. I would do the same thing. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If my kid was going, if one of my kids, would, God forbid, was going through something like that, I think I'd be doing the same thing, Aubrey. I'd be going there to those songs. And just like you said, it, it feeds you. It does. I mean, I remember being when my kids were younger, you know, and the time in the in the car driving, mm-hmm. right, just around town, whatever. We're going to the park. We're going to the church for rosary group or whatever. You just to have that on. They're hearing it. They're singing the mm-hmm. songs when they're mm-hmm. little. It's just, I, I don't know. I'm like solidifying, solidifying um, that relationship. Yes. Like, um, I agree. I think it's one more way to praise him, praise God. And it's one more way for us to show him that we love him. We're taking the time. We could be listening to anything else. Anything. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, sometimes now the kids are teenagers. I have three teenagers. And they they want to turn the radio. And I allow it here and there. You know, and I always say, oh, no, that, that song, if I see something that's here, something that's I can tell it's bad. I'm like, oh, no, not that. Let's get away from that kind of music and they they know what i'm talking about you know because we don't have to listen to just um christ songs right i mean you can listen to all types of music Mm -hmm. you just have to be careful that what what you're listening to is good for your soul yep you know yeah i just gave a talk about sin and be careful of lies what you see be careful ears what you hear yeah the father up above is looking down in love right so yep yeah like, I mean, I, I tell my kids that all the time. Like, what is this? How is this bringing you closer to the Lord by listening to it? Or if they're singing a song, I'm like, oh, what's that song about? Yeah. You know, and all my kids can sing. So I'm like, God's given you this gift to sing. You need to be singing songs that are praising to the Lord. Yeah. That's like, awesome. I'm, like I'm not on the only one that does that. And I don't <laughs> even have the gift of singing, but I do. I tell my kids, you know, songs have the power to to either, you know, get you closer to God or away from God. So just be very careful of the things that you are listening. And they're, I think for the most part, they're very aware, you mm-hmm. know. And, and again, they, I started listening to them, this music when they were babies. So they are used to listening in the car and at home. And, you know, my kids um, don't speak Portuguese fluently, but they can sing Portuguese fluently. Because they, that's how much they listen to Brazilian music, you know, and a lot of it is worship music, you know, uh, that I found throughout the years that if also feed me, feed my soul, mm-hmm. you know. So that's just how it is. And, Aubrey, I, 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 I love seeing how the community came together to help your family through those tough times. Oh, my gosh. It, like, I, I'm... Uh, I guess you don't really realize like what you have, and um, especially in your in your Catholic faith community, mm. when when there's a struggle um, until it happens. Because yeah, people were so so generous mm. with their time, generous with their with making meals. That was so huge. I mean, mm. um, it was Amelia was in so much pain, and there was so much I had to do to just care for her, and yeah. and to try to worry about dinner and feeding too much the rest of my family every day Mm -hmm. um was really was such a gift when we had meals coming because that was like just one less thing i had to even think about and you you know as moms right it's what are we having for dinner yes and then when you have teenage boys and you pick them up from the school that's like their very first question that they ask you because all they think about is food food. yes it's very true (laughs) Was it hard for you to accept the help, or did you quickly realize oh, no. that yep. you needed it? The Lord has humbled me many times in my life. That's and awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm like, no, if people wanted to, and you know, or run and pick something up for me from the store, fine. Or, yeah, or pick up kids, bring kids home from school. Thank you so much, Elsa, for those times you brought kids home from school. Oh, my gosh, that was, or... that was my pleasure. That was so easy, you know, and we don't even live that far. We're like seven minutes from each other. So whenever I could help I was happy to do it and your kids are such good kids thank you beautiful inside and out so yes it was it's it's a beautiful thing I feel bad for people that don't live in community 
yeah. that that don't think they need yes. to live in community. They don't think that they need one another. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and just seeing how the community kind of embraced oh you my gosh, and hugged yes. you, mm-hmm. and, and it was beautiful. And even still, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm. I you guys like are very loved. You know what I mean? You're really good people, and you give so much of yourselves to the community. You know. I mean, you and your husband work for the church. I mean, that's huge. That is huge. That's sacrifice. You know what I mean? Use your gifts, giving back to the church. I think that everybody uh, recognizes it, that, that, that is take sacrifice for that. And um, when we can help you and say thank you for that, I think helping your family through that, it was one way of the community saying thank you to your family yes, it was it was a huge everything blessing you do. god is so good yes, he just he knows is good. all the time amen and all the time god is good amen all right i think we're ready for another break and we'll be right back thank you oh The Carolina Catholic Parish Portal is now open. You'll find a section for your parish with contact info and easy access to your parish website, YouTube, and Facebook page. Check out your parish portal today at carolinacatholicradio.org or the Carolina Catholic mobile app. Carolina Catholic News. Reflections with Father John is a new show featuring Father John Giuliani from All Saints Catholic Church in Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Father John was born in Providence, Rhode Island in 1951. He joined the Rock Hill Oratory in August of 1975 and was ordained as a priest in June 1980. He has been a pastor at Divine Savior Church St. Mary's, and for 28 years at St. Philip Neri Church in Fort Mill. He has also served two terms as provost of the Rock Hill Oratory. Father John's vision led to the evolution of All Saints Catholic Church. He returned there in May of 2019. Father John is a quintessential pastor. With a twinkle in his eye, he always finds humor and a touch of fun to replace negative thinking. While in his presence, one feels acknowledged, accepted, and part of the flock. His homilies are always inspiring. He has unique gifts so essential to God's ministry. Carolina Catholic Radio is delighted to present Reflections with Father John Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 4.20 p.m. For the Carolina Catholic Radio, I'm Pam Cullen. God bless y'all. Experience the incredible story of the woman who Time Magazine named the most influential Catholic woman in the United States. Born Rita Rizzo, the future mother Angelica grew up in a rough neighborhood in Canton, Ohio. Young Rita experienced abandonment, rejection, and heartache, but God touched her through a woman named Rhoda Wise. Encounter this amazing woman at the Mother Angelica Museum. Plan your visit today at motherangelicamuseum.com. Hi, I'm Jean. And I'm Kathleen. Please join us every Wednesday at 5 for a brand new episode of our show, Joyful Echo. We absolutely love sharing this time with you. It goes so fast. Oh my goodness, yes. (laughs) We are so committed to praying to the Holy Spirit and seeing what He wants to do in all of our lives. That's right. Sometimes we're sharing scripture. Sometimes it's something about the saints. When time permits, we will share lovely recipes. Yes, Kathleen will, because I'm not the best at that (laughs) lately, but we want you to join us. And if you're new out there and you've not tuned in at five o'clock on Wednesday, please come and join us. Yes. And until then, we are praying for you. See you later, ladies. Carolina Catholic Radio spotlights Catholic apostolates and ministries to increase their awareness and encourage participation. Catch the spirit, show your support, and get involved. Contact us through our website at carolinacatholicradio.org.
Welcome back to Healed and Restored. I'm Elsa Spade, your host, and I have my friend Aubrey Quintero here with me today. And we are having a blast talking about the healing power of music, right? Um, she is an amazing singer. Thank you. She works at St. Gabriel's now. She used to work at St. Mark. And we lost her to St. Gabriel, but that's okay. <laughs> Holy Spirit. Yes. He She's in needed. a good place. She was needed over there. I get it. I totally understand. Um, you know, for me personally, just because of the trauma I suffered when I was a little girl, my identity as God's beloved daughter was completely damaged mm -hmm. by that. And I truly feel and believe that throughout the years, God has used many different things to show me that I am his beloved daughter, mm -hmm. you know, and, and praise and worship music has definitely been one of those ways that he has got to my heart. You know, um, I understand now that I belong to Christ and I think this music has helped me a lot. Um, just because there's a lot of other broken people out there who are singing this music too. And I think that once you can relate to other people and once you can um, understand that you're not alone in your sufferings, it, it makes those lies really dissipate. You know what I mean? So praise and worship music has that kind of power, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That healing power. Um, uh, and like I said, I, I, I make a habit of listening to it throughout my day. And um, it's been a, a gift. To me, it, this music is a gift. And I want to talk about it so other people that don't know about it can understand what a gift it is. Mm -hmm. You know, when you make it a, a habit of, of listening to this type of music. So just last weekend, you invited my daughter, Bella, to come and sing with you for this confirmation retreat that St. Gabriel put out for the kids. By the way, whoever organized this needs to be completely recognized. And I'm thinking your husband and you probably did this together. So my right? husband my husband did um, put it together, and then he's got another youth minister, Caroline. Okay. And so the two of them did majority of the work. He just basically said, Aubrey, this is what I need. And then I reached out to uh, a couple of musicians. Mm -hmm. um, so we had drums and bass player and guitarist, and I played piano and guitar and sang. And then just um, my son, Anthony, who's 18, he came, he sang, and then Bella sang, so a few of the teens. Um, but, yeah, it was Adrian. That's beautiful. He, he, we've been to many, many, over these last 20 years of doing ministry, we've been to a lot of conferences, a lot of retreats. Um, he just knows what it what works. Yeah, what what it takes. Mm -hmm. what, yeah, especially to to um, get to the kids. I think it's mm -hmm. so important because Bella came home and she had all these beautiful stories to tell. And she's like, "Mom," and she knew a lot of the kids from Brianna going to Holy Trinity for her eighth grade. So Bella got to meet these kids when Brie was playing basketball for Holy Trinity and there she is over there at this retreat and all these kids recognize her mm -hmm. as Brie's sister, big sister and she recognized a lot of these kids too and she said mom even the kids that I knew were like the jocks and this and that that were too cool you know they were getting down on their knees so that's the beauty of this kind of stuff, this kind of music, mm -hmm. putting it all together, adoration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole package mm -hmm. to get to these kids. We have to recognize and we have to remember that our kids, especially the teenagers right now, they are bombarded with so much mm -hmm. vying for so their much. attention. Yeah. We almost need to, uh, th these retreats need to happen even more often mm -hmm. because we need to take them out of their environment, away from their, you know, cell phones and, and, and that stuff that's so consuming and plant them here with the Lord in the way you guys did with this retreat. Yes, I didn't realize at first that Adrian said no cell phones. Like, none of the kids had their cell phones. And I'm like, wow, that's, that was bold, you know? That like, is bold, that's huge. but that's awesome. It was, and I think there's so much fruit that was able to come from them not being distracted by their devices because mm -hmm. they were present. They were present for the talks. They were present for the, the music. They were present to one another in their small group time. They're just present, you know? That's beautiful. And you know what? They probably all recognize how much they needed that. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, we've gotten emails back from parents just saying, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. My daughter's been going through confirmation, but she's really been struggling with trying to make this decision of whether she really wants to be confirmed or not. And this retreat just helps solidify that's awesome. This, you know, what we're doing, like what what confirmation is about, and 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 having a life in Christ, and and being a Christian, yes. and living in yes. in that way. Um, Such an Christ. important sacrament. Such an important sacrament. I think I really believe confirmation is very very important. It, it, it's it really is at an age, and we were talking about that before the show. You know, they're trying to do something different and and yeah restored order yep Mm -hmm. and and doing it a little bit younger but there's something about being confirmed around 14 15 years old that i think you're fully aware of what's going on and um your yes is a big yes you know Mm -hmm. it has that potential you have so many questions at that age and i think you just your mind is just ripe for the truth especially right now when when there's so much out there that i think our kids are recognizing that it's not the truth Mm -hmm. and they're sick and tired of being sold all the lies Uh you know Uh so these retreats these confirmation retreats i think are powerful so thank you yes you're welcome it was it was awesome i'm so glad bella could come um yes she was happy to go she was very happy to go she got the time off from work she was super excited to go i mean this i think she's realizing now that this is a um a gift from god first of all and that she is enjoying it Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And we've had this talk. You know, she's a year away from leaving for college. And I said, you know, honey, when you leave, don't forget to use that one gift that is so beautiful in you. Gift yeah. of singing, gift of music. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, make sure you get involved in a choir somewhere. Make sure you are using that gift. And she's like, I know, Mom, I know. I will, I will. So I think she gets it. Mm-hmm. You know, she And this type of retreats, being with her peers, it helps solidify that. Right. I think something that Father said was, um, you know, it's not that our kids are the church of the future. They are the church now. Mm -hmm. He's like, they can do things that I can't do. I can do things that they can't do. You know, they can be the ones who are evangelizing to their peers. Yes, I and agree. So, so if they know who Christ is and they're they're living in a life of faith and walking with the Lord, mm-hmm. they can they can help their peers to come to know joy, to come to know hope through Christ. And and in coming from an adult, it's a different perspective that that teen or whatever may not mm-hmm. be Receive, open to receiving. Yes. Yeah, what we might have yes. to say, but but if it's a peer. So that's why like these teens they they are powerful. I know. And if they know. know Christ and they and they are convicted of his love for them, then they're going to be huge Amazing. witnesses. God yeah. is going to use them. I totally agree. I mean, I, I my hope is that, you know, Bella and all how many other teens did you have singing? Was uh we had Anthony and Bella and then my Bella sang a little bit and um Sydney sure would sing a little bit too so so you had four teenagers present I just hope that God use them to inspire all those other kids because some of them might even have the gift of music too mm-hmm. and they haven't been using it right so that might you know spark a little fire oh, yeah. in them future That's exactly a little bit a little exactly. bit in the future I'll be Bring I, I, some teens in to sing with me. Oh, I hope you will. And I know you will. I can't believe our time together is coming to an end already. I mean, this has gone by way too fast. You're going to have to come back. Okay. Promise you come back. <laughs> yeah. We have to talk more about music. I just love it. You are such a delight, Aubrey. Thank you, Elsa. You really are. I could spend hours talking with you. Thank you for coming to Healed and Restored. And thank you for using your gift of music to bring other people closer to Christ. Thank you. Thank it you. is such a you're, gift. You're welcome. Like, it is such a gift. I like to end my show with a few questions in a scripture verse as an invitation for my listeners to go deeper into each episode. So here are the questions from today's show. When was the last time when praise and worship music moved you or helped you hear God's voice? I want you to think about that. Question number two. Each of us have been given different gifts for a reason. Are you aware of your special 
God-given gifts? And how can you use those gifts to serve God and his people? And the scripture to ponder today is from Psalm 150. Give praise to the Lord with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipes. Give praise with crashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath give praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you again for coming to my show, Aubrey. And a big thank you to all of those who are faithfully listening to Healed and Restored every week. Please know how much I appreciate you. This is your show. And if you, if for more shows like this one, please go on www.carolinacatholicradio.org for more faith-based shows like this one. I can't wait to be with you again next week. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.